up at Unicorn here. I am a new subscriber to Alexis Exodus and I am enjoying myself. So I don't know if you all saw this new interview with Dr. Umar Johnson on The Breakfast Club, but I took a few notes um, regarding the discussion between him, Charlemagne, and DJ Envy. So the prince of Pan-Africanism is a controversial figure, namely in terms of how people see his money management as it relates to the institutions he's been building for approximately the better part of a decade. Uh, you can comment below the timeline if you're more familiar with that than I am. But um, the school psychologist, who has quickly become one of the internet's favorite people to meme. I mean, this guy is all kind of TikTok sounds. It's just, it, it's just wonderful. It's, it's good content. Anyhow, he maintains a message that is relevant, regardless of how you, um, regardless of how you feel about the messenger, the message is, um, solid. So I guess you could say he's a social justice warrior of sorts, working in the way of interrupting the school to prison pipeline for black boys. So uh, truly, there, there's honor in at least that much. So Dr. Umar holds seminars for black parents, teaching them what they need to know to protect their children. So he gives seminars about IEPs, autism awareness, how to write letters to whom they concern when they're concerned, uh, how to review psychological evaluations, and more that parents need to know to effectively advocate for their black children during parent-teacher meetings, conferences, meetings with principals, boards, whatever it is. So the Verona Pyrus has interrupted this for him, um, but he does maintain a social media presence. I contacted him once asking him to... Uh, visit up a unicorn and he was just like sis i don't do <laughs> youtube interviews i i do tv and radio and i can respect that so dr umar the man of six degrees and founder of fdmg academy proudly owns two buildings that sit across the street from one another the marcus garvey building and the frederick douglas building hence the acronym FDMG for the names of these noble suffrage figures of Black history. The Marcus Garvey, the Marcus Garvey building, excuse me, is the elementary school, and the Frederick Douglass building is the high school. These two buildings that allegedly received a thirteen million dollar renovation in twenty ten still need work, as reported by. Dr. Omar Johnson during the Islamic month of Ramadan while visiting the Breakfast Club in April of 2021. The high school has three weeks, excuse me, three weeks of repairs that need to be done, which are HVAC, uh, electrical, and plumbing. Um, the maintenance is something that Dr. Omar admittedly cannot afford. Uh, he has suggested that black people volunteer their time, but um, yeah, those are not done yet. But he says that they could open in three weeks if it was done. So the modern and former charter, charter school campus needs zero construction, only repair, according to Dr. Johnson. Although there are several historically black churches, colleges and universities, Dr. Umar believes that his failure to galvanize sufficient financial support for his all boys schools lie in the fact that blacks are so used to being parented by white institutions that building this, which would be their total responsibility is both frightening and foreign to blacks as a result of the buck breaking conditioning of American chattel slavery. Now I know so many people hate to hear that, especially non-blacks because they're like slavery was oh so long ago, but little do you know, black people did not earn their civil rights until the late sixties. So sharecropping, Jim Crow, I mean, if you've got a grandmother, that was going on in her time. So please uh, don't neglect your history. Try to understand. Um, 
buck breaking and the result of that and behaving in that way has become a survival technique for uh, many black men. And um, as horrible as, as it is for the community, it does work for them um, as individuals. Anyhow, the Verona Pirates gave black parents the opportunity to teach their own children from home, showing them that this is something that they can do with minimal coaching. That's an awesome thing because I know I used to go from black household to black household to black mother, parent, and tell them that they need to pull their children out of these public schools. Do not trust them. Do not send your enemy to teacher or do not send your child to be taught by your enemy. Your child will come home self-hating. That is part of the institution. Okay, that's that's part of the programming at these public schools to idealize one culture and put down your own unless you're part of that culture being idealized. Um, Black parents via this experience of teaching their own kids uh, have come to the realization that their children have been targeted as victims for get-rich-quick schemes by public school institutions. I know when you hear the term get rich quick, you would think that, you know, that's like a lottery ticket or gambling, but... um, so schools are paid much more, okay, when a child is siphoned into special education classes. So when black parents are asked permission for their child to be evaluated, right, mentally, emotionally, evaluated by the school psychologists, these children are more often than not thrown into special education, not because they need to be, but because it is financially beneficial for public schools to have them there. So I remember when I was um, in high school, we had special ed students who were very bright, but maybe they had cerebral palsy. Special ed students who were very bright, but maybe were blind. Special ed students who were nonverbal, autistic. Special ed students who had incredible behavioral problems, um, like noticeable. Um, But this is not the case with which like like how rapidly our black boys where nothing is wrong with them are being thrown into special ed. Like this is one of the predatory practices against black boys that Dr. Umar teaches parents to avoid. Drug companies have also infiltrated public school culture with their financial sponsorship and support. To the point where teachers think that they can diagnose something like ADHD, even as non-mental health professionals. In reality, no one uncertified in this regard should be comfortable tossing around recommendations for medications like Adderall and other narcotics that have long-term effects. But, you know, you get people like, you know... I'm not even going to name any, but these people who claim to have psychology degrees who in reality are just, you know, university dropouts who pick up the DSM and they think that they know something. And I'm just like, honey, you don't even have a BA and you shouldn't be talking about psychology unless you've got a master's degree. That is when you have some authority on the topic. Now, it's okay to talk about symptoms. It's okay to, you know, it's okay to talk about these things, but I'm just like, there are those who are just launching labels at people. And I'm just like, you have no no authority to do so. So black children are being diagnosed with emotional disturbances and behavioral issues for not getting along with teachers, staff, and faculty who demonstrate bigotry, anti-black racism, and other aversions to them as black children. And you need look no further than your local news to understand that so many people in positions of powers just have anti-black sentiment as a part of their culture. And it's upon us to work that out. So instead of remedying this anti-black sentiment as a problem, they diagnose the children who are victims of anti-black sentiment with fictional excuse me, fictional behavior problems. So mental and behavioral issues are, you know, those are things that are determined by a pattern of behavior. Black people, I love you, but the word is not pattern, okay? It's pattern, 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 
pattern. <laughs> uh, determined by a pattern of behavior. If a child has a pattern of behaviors wherein their interpersonal relationships routinely suffer across the board with peers, adults, and just, I mean, even animals, okay, a diagnosis is fair. However, as is the case with black boys in specific, it only takes one failed relationship with a white teacher who is often female before they are brought up on mental health charges of emotional disturbance and or learning disabilities requiring Ritalin and other medications that are dangerous for adults, let alone school children. Now, in better news, HBCUs, which is an acronym for historically black colleges and universities, are responsible for 50% of all black professionals. HBCUs routinely supply the black middle class with middle class professionals. Now, something that I really like that Dr. Umar said is um, his belief that black men in specific, and there is my shoddy little chair, no judgment. Whew. It's the belief of Dr. Umar Johnson that black men should become certified in vocational occupations such as roofing, carpentry, plumbing, and welding prior to consuming college degrees. And I, too, uh, I support that because in reality, you need something in your hands. You need an ability in your hands, an exportable ability in your hands, Right? in order to make ends meet. Now, of course, you can go get your degrees after that. You can be a welder or you don't even have to be one. Just have that as a skill. Go get your doctorate, practice your medicine, whatever it is, and be married. But definitely have that under your belt. I remember there were um, so many vocational tracks back when I was in high school. But of course, that was, you know, a forever ago. Um and they're not doing a whole lot of that anymore. So you've got a lot of black men out here who are being shut out of, of you know, education early on. I mean, there are these aversions to school because honestly, they're being, I mean, most school teachers are white women. And they have these visceral responses to black boys, especially when the black boy is athletic or towers over them or is upset about something. You know, they bring the police into the school and the kids are getting their teeth broken out of their mouths. I mean, even the little girls, let alone the boys, you know, are getting tossed back and forth in the classrooms by their desks and knocked into walls and knocked bloody and arrested for regular school fights that you're just supposed to get suspended for. Like they have... Black boys are dropping out with good reason. With good reason. I mean, is sending them to a private school or a charter school better? You betcha. The best thing that you can do, homeschool your kid. They can get some good grades. I mean, you can be done with, I have seen so, so many little black girls who are done with high school by age 14 because their mother homeschooled them. And when you homeschool your kid, there are teachers online, there are coaches online for the parents, there is just, a, there's a ton of support. Even down to the point of like, okay, well, these kids need to meet up for a field trip just so that they can get some peer-to-peer -peer socialization. Like, it really is the way to go for black children, but especially if you have these black boys, because they are not being given a fair shake. That is just the reality. They're not being given a fair shake. So every day that you send your little black boy to public school, chances are you are sending him to be institutionalized by a group of people who are anti him. I mean... I know K-12, they will send you a laptop. They will send you all of the science, you know, products and books that you need to have for the curriculum. They will send you all of those things. You don't have to pay for them. It still qualifies as public school education. As a former school teacher, I really have to put it out there that so much of what we do in class, we get like 45 minutes for a subject, okay? 45 minutes to teach your kid math. 
15 of those minutes go straight away to classroom management. Sit down, Andrew. Turn around in your chair, Sarah. Stop passing notes, Jake and Tom. I'm serious. Go to the office, Raina. I'm going to write you a referral, so-and-so. Like classroom management from, from kids being kids, from having 30 kids in class. It's a party, right? And then there's instruction. Maybe 15 minutes of instruction. And then there's the questions. And then there's, well, who got it and who didn't? Who understood and who didn't? Now, when you're homeschooling your kid and they get something, they can be done in a week what would take them months in a public school because they have to cross that finish line as a team. You get what I'm saying? Your little black boy can be done with high school at 16, two years of vocation, and go to college at eight, eight, you know, at 18 with, with that vocation of welding or plumbing or whatever it is under his belt. That's glorious. That is good. You, you want that. You want that to happen. But so many black parents, it's like, like, like I can say this, you know, I, I, I buried my son. I'm not a black parent. I'm a black auntie. I'm a this, I'm a that. But like so many black parents are so knee deep in working and bills. They just don't have the energy to think of other things. But I'm telling you, like, if you got a mama, you know, keep that black kid at home with his grandma. Leave, leave him at home. Call the other parents, you know, join a church. Y'all going to play basketball on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. And then summer, y'all can do your football thing or however these sports are coordinated. Like, like, come on. With all of the material places like K-12 have, you really can't keep your kid at home. The most y'all have to pay for is, is, I mean, your internet. You've already got Xfinity, Wi-Fi, Comcast, whatever it is. Come on. Not everybody's going to make it into, you know, if, if Dr. Umar comes with his, you know, FDMG Academy, this P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware 19809, and it's just Gucci, then great. But even then, not everybody's going to get in. We don't know how it will operate. We don't know what's going to go on in the first year, the first two years of a private school. My God. I've worked at so many private schools that tanked, tanked. Money is the problem every time. They can have great curriculum, but money is the problem every time. Not everybody's going to make it in. There could be all kinds of like, it is just better to take these things into your own hands. I've talked to so many different black women. I'm like, sis, do you know that you can start a daycare? Like, like, girl, you got grass. Like, oh, but this is a Section 8 little duplex. Girl, that works. As long as you got a fenced-in backyard, you got grass, your water gets hot enough, you got a rail for the kids to walk down the stairs. Girl, get you some mats and some toys. Get you some, some nap time mats and some toys. And, and, you know, you can run a little school out of your daycare. You get six kids to start with and you can be home all day, you know. And your, you know, your little mom jeans and t-shirt and you ain't got to get dressed. It's, it's the uh, uh, Dorona Hyrus and, and you don't have to do, you know. Have minimal people around you. You, you. you get a thermometer, take temperatures before everybody comes in. Like, you can do it. You can do it. And you can solve a huge problem, especially for the boys. Now, for me, there's a line I don't cross because like as much as I love, you know, my nephews and it takes men to raise men. OK, it, it takes men to raise men. So on my channel, I my focus is black women and girls because that's what I know. That's what I am. But some of you boy moms, you dads out there, like, you really can do it. Especially the dads who are struggling getting hired. Especially the dads who, like, don't have a criminal record. Like, you could, Lord, it, it, it's, it's easy money. 
the, these daycares and you know if if the parent can afford and the state pays for the daycare it's easy money it's more than what you would be making I don't mean to hurt your feelings and you don't even it's not like you have to you don't even have to have graduated from high school because the teachers are online I remember you know not only was I a school teacher but I used to grade papers for teachers who were online teachers you know They just sit at home on their little, you know, what's that thing called? Lazy boy chairs. And they set up their laptops on a, a TV tray stand and they teach. They lecture from their living rooms. And there's all kind of technical support. Like you can't lose. If this fantasy of an FDMG academy comes to fruition or not, like... There's so much we can do with very little. There's so much we can do with very little. And now is a perfect time. Now is the perfect time. Homeschooling your kids can help you to bypass so much psychological damage that your kids will inevitably be damaged by in an American society. Until we clean up, I I mean, I'll I'll be honest, I don't think racism is going anywhere. You know, I I don't. I think anti-blackness and anti-indigenous sentiment is, I mean, it's global. But at least if you stop sending your sheep to be educated by a wolf, there's hope. All right, so anyhow, um, that's it for uh, Dr. Omar Johnson. I got quiet really quickly because I remember uh, maybe six years ago, I wanted to teach at this FDMG. You know, I would watch all these Dr. Omar lectures and be so inspired. And then year after year, I just kind of, um, just year after year, I just kind of was like, okay, maybe, um, Maybe not. Maybe not. But with or without the school parents, you know, there are the things that you can learn from Dr. Omar. You can, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones. (sighs) Homeschool your kids. If you've got a grandma in the house, they can stay home. It just, there needs to be an adult there. If you've got, you know... Mom who works, dad doesn't have a job. You got an adult in the home. Kid can be homeschooled. Just make sure the house is safe and it's not set on fire. You guys are good to go. All they need you to do is monitor them. Monitor their safety. The online teachers, principals, administrators, like they have it covered. It's a crazy resource not to take advantage of. Especially when you know you have a black boy. I'm up to unicorn and I'm out of here.